Hey, it's Jason here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about something that's uh, kind of important to me and it's overall ownership of a vehicle. Uh, specifically, as you know, I collect Land Rovers. I have six currently from a 91 Classic all the way up to a 2016 Sport. Uh, most of them, though, are, um, you know, within 20 years of age or older. And whenever I'm looking at buying a vehicle, it's really important to me to understand the history of the vehicle, how it was taken care of, and documentation. And you might hear people say, hey, this is a well-documented car, and I actually will pay more for documentation. So I wanted to do two things in this video. Talk about the importance of documentation uh, as I see it when I buy something to add to my collection, whether it's at an auction or a private individual. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, the cost of ownership of a 98 D1 that I just acquired. I'm the second owner of this vehicle. So let's start with documentation. So most of the time I prefer to buy a vehicle from a private cell that is not listed. I like to find a vehicle that somebody has, they really like it and enjoy it, and they might contact me and say, hey Jason, I would love to add this to your collection. They typically would say that because they kind of know what my long-term goal of the collection is, and they just want their vehicle to be part of that and not be in a junkyard or modified to be doing off-roading and all that stuff. So the first thing I ask is, what kind of documentation do you have? Um, if it's a one owner, um, they might have documentation. If it's been, if they're the 10th owner, uh, you know, it may not be a vehicle for my collection. This 98 D1 that I purchased from the gentleman in Maine that I've talked about uh, is one owner. I'm the second owner. And I got so much documentation, I've been able to put this book together, and you can see just how thick it is, of everything. So the first thing I'll do is look at the documentation, understand the mileage. So this vehicle has about 180,000 miles. I want to understand how long did it take to get 180,000 miles. Uh, you can do that because if you have documentation, you can kind of track the oil changes and when things happened. And I know for this vehicle, it got a lot of mileage really, really quick. It was having its 45,000 mile service, I think, by its third year. And it was driven pretty hard from a highway perspective from Georgia to New York City to Maine uh, frequently in the first 10 years of its life. The last 10 years of its life, it sat in a garage um, stored effectively. So the documentation and the importance of the documentation will enable you to see the history of the vehicle. I can understand the mileage. And then what I do is I take that I scan every page, so every one of these pages I would scan. I make uh, electronic PDF copies, and I put it in a spreadsheet to compute everything. And if you're really lucky, like I was on this D1, you get cool things like the window sticker. So this was the sticker that was hanging in the window. I also got the welcome letter of this uh, purchase when he bought it. And I know in 98, when he bought this vehicle, it was $38,925 interesting so then i wanted to compute and understand on that thirty-eight thousand dollar price tag since this is a very very well documented vehicle with all the receipts what did it cost him to maintain it because we know land rovers do have their demons and they do cost a little bit of money so what i have here is a spreadsheet of everything that he had documented i have everything from oil changes 45,000 mile services, new tires, tires, um, brake line replacements, windshields, all of the maintenance that you'd expect. So from 1998, and the last record I have is June 7th, 2019. Uh, so from 98 uh, to June 7th, 2019, the grand total of maintenance was $27,145 and 85 cents. I don't know if you can see that there, but I'll have copies on my website. So it took me a while to go through all of this documentation, sort the good stuff um, that I needed, and then stuff that just kind of got thrown in, and then to really understand the total cost of, um, of ownership of the vehicle. So for documentation, I'm trying to do a few things here. I want to understand the mileage and progression of mileage of the vehicle. 
Uh, I'm not concerned if it's high mileage, if it got all that mileage the first five years of its life. This is a good example of that. The mileage wasn't strung out over many, many years. Heavy, heavy, heavy interstate driving, and then pleasure driving thereafter. And if I know all the mileage, then I can track the actual oil changes and make sure, you know, they weren't going 40,000 miles between oil changes, and then I could have an engine um, that is maybe not that good on the inside. And then I can also understand the total cost of maintenance of the vehicle. And in this case, he spent over from 98 to 2009 a uh, pretty penny, $27,000. Now, there was some miscellaneous maintenance. I said 2009. 2019, June 7, 2019, from 98, was 27000 My apologies for the error there. So he spent a lot of money on maintenance, so that tells me it was well-maintained. Uh, we can all argue that some of the maintenance may have been overpriced. He did a lot of the work at Land Rover dealerships, so he was paying a premium. But it also shows me that he cared about his vehicle, and it's a really good example to put in my collection. Uh, so if you're looking at an old Land Rover, um, ask for service history, and don't be alarmed if you see a number that is very close to what the sticker price may have been, given you know he was about $10,000 short of what he paid for the vehicle. So in 98, he paid 38,000 for the vehicle. And from 98 to 2019, he put $27,000 into the vehicle. So if you were to compute that over the course of say 20 years, 21 years in this case, he was putting um, call, you know, a little over a grand a year of say 1300 or so a year. For most Land Rovers, you're going to expect to spend about two grand per year in preventative maintenance, even if they're just sitting. Oil changes, and when things break, which they will, I have one right now that has an issue with brake lines that I'm having to replace. You're going to have to put that money into it. So on the 98D1 that I got, I am the second owner. I have the window sticker. I have history from the day we left the uh, dealership all the way to the day I took it. I made this binder that I would keep in the car and go to car shows with. I also have scanned electronic copies of everything so I can also have that on the website. So that's all I wanted to chat about was just, if you ever are wondering if a car collector is looking at your vehicle and they're pretty adamant and pushy about documentation, it's because it will in fact help the resale value if that collector ever goes to sell it. And in many cases, if you get somebody that's really pushing for that, um, don't be, you know, don't, don't be surprised if they're willing to pay a little bit more for a well-documented vehicle. This is the most documented Rover I have in my collection. The other ones were pretty sketchy with documentation until I purchased them and I put them into my process of documenting everything and making electronic copies. Again, this is Jason. My website is jams.net, J-A-M-Z.net. You can check it out, click on Land Rovers, and you can learn about all the ones I have and what I'm doing. I'm based uh, in uh, north of Baltimore, Maryland, and this is my home office, and I'm going to get back outside and enjoy this weekend. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great day.